You're watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire. This plant portrait is for red maple, Acer rubrum. One of the best times to identify red maple is during the winter season. The youngest twigs show their bright red color, and you can see how red maple's branches and twigs grow opposite each other. The placement of each pair of twigs rotates around the branch so that no immediate pair of twigs is directly over another. This type of branching pattern is referred to as decussate. The winter twig exhibits pairs of buds along its length, arranged in the decussate pattern, with a set of buds at the terminus of the twig or branch. Some of the bright red buds will become flowers, and some will become leaves. We can see leaf scars below the new buds. Here are some interesting patterns of leaf scars at the junction between an older twig and its newer counterpart. In late winter or early spring, when warmer temperatures occur during the day, you can easily spot a red maple tree in the woods. From a distance, it looks like a red-limbed tree among all the other brown or gray trees. At first, the branches are covered with expanding flower buds, and then with blooming flowers. Gradually, the tree becomes covered with the newly created red maple seeds. Let's move close to those red maple buds so we can better see the flowers as they emerge. The buds open outwards and the stamens peek out. These are staminate flowers, the flowers which carry the male reproductive parts. Flowers open sequentially, from those closest to the tree's trunk, outward to the buds at the end of each branch. Stamens peek out from the protective buds. The anthers swell and turn from red to dark purple. The light-colored filaments lengthen to dangle their anthers in the slightest breeze. The anthers begin turning yellow with pollen. Within a single group of flowers, some anthers will still be red and not fully developed, while others have moved on to dispersing their yellow pollen. As more stamens are covered with yellow pollen, the overall look of the flowers is a mass of red with yellow tips. This cluster of staminate flowers clearly shows the variety of developmental phases for the male flowers newly emerging stamens, extending filaments, anthers turning dark purple to black, and yellow pollen releasing. Can you pick out the different phases for the stamens in this image? After the flowers complete their job, you can find the cluster dropped to the ground in the woods. Notice the remains of anthers, which indicate this came from a group of staminate flowers. Turning our attention to the pistillate flowers, check out the flower buds. They also start with an expansion of the buds, with red plant tissue peeking out. This time, the part sticking out is a Y-shaped stigma, which extends beyond the short red petals. Clusters of pistillate flowers, the flowers with the female reproductive parts, brighten a spring day. While the stigmas do their job of accepting pollen, the small paired seed cases grow larger at the end of a lengthened flower stalk, or peduncle. In this photo, you can just see some dying stigmas in the background, while the foreground flowers have fresh stigmas. Red maple may have trees with only female pistillate flowers or the tree may only have male staminate flowers. Occasionally, a red maple will have both types of flowers, usually on different branches of the tree. The paired seeds develop at the end of the peduncle. Red maple seeds in their winged cases are called samaras, or keys. If an ovary was not fertilized, 
no seed will develop. This makes for a lopsided looking Samara. Strong winds can blow a cluster of unfinished Samaras to the ground. The seeds fill out and the Samaras are nearly ready to break away for transport to a new location. New trees can sprout from these fully ripened seeds as soon as they reach the ground. While the Samaras are ripening, the first red maple leaf buds expand and new leaves appear. The first leaves are likely to be tinged with red. Spring trees now have a blend of red and green tones to them as the leaves grow out and the Samaras ripen. Seeds sprout into red maple seedlings. Notice the two cotyledons followed by the first set of true leaves. These first leaves are rather simple, without the lobes we find in mature leaves. Let's study the red maple leaves on saplings and trees, starting with a time when they begin to break bud. As you can see through this series of images, the bud expands. The leaves push upward and outward and the leaves unfold. Notice the dried stamens hanging below the terminal leaves in this photo. New leaves might be red or lime green with red overtones. Or shades and combinations of green and red when they first emerge. Eventually they will turn a deeper green. Sometimes the leaf color is burnished red or a brown red. As I mentioned earlier, the leaves are arranged in pairs across from each other. They are opposite leaves. It's easy to see how the decussate arrangement of leaves works when we look from above onto the leaves. As the season progresses from spring to summer, the tree fills out with green leaves. Each leaf retains its red petiole. The entire leaf consists of two portions, the petiole and the blade. Each leaf has three lobes with V-shaped notches between the lobes. Sometimes the leaf will have what looks like two smaller lobes near the base of the blade. The red maple leaf has palmate veins. Each vein travels to a separate lobe from the central point of the petiole. Also, check out those leaf margins, which are toothed. The underside of the leaf is much lighter in color. This also gives us a nice view of the palmate venation. Spring leaves will be varying shades of red-green and then light green as they mature. During hot and dry summers, the tree becomes more susceptible to attacks from insects, creating galls, and fungi, creating brown fungal spots. Red maple grows new leaves during the summer months. Red leaf petioles are attached to young green twigs. The current year's green twigs are attached to the previous year's reddish-brown twigs. And the brown twigs are connected to gray branches. The gray branches are still in that opposite configuration. You may find younger branches sprouting from a red maple's larger trunk. This group of small trunks arose after the tree's first trunk was cut down years earlier. Observe how the trunk of a relatively young tree and the connected smaller trunk growing out near the base has smooth gray bark. As the red maple tree ages, its bark develops ridges. Here's an even older tree with its ridged bark and with several smaller trunks from the same root system. Further up the tree, the gray bark is clearly ridged, and what had been tiny shoots years ago are now larger branches growing upwards, almost like smaller trunks 
next to the main tree trunk. Here are some views of an entire tree from a fairly young red maple to a teenaged tree to a view up through the branches and leaves of an older tree to a long-range view of the top of a mature tree. When the leaves turn color in the fall, the tree may be a vibrant yellow or orange or red. Check out this small tree with its multicolored leaves. Here are closer views of the colorful leaves. Each set of leaves are from different red maple trees. Eventually, the leaves turn brown. These leaf petioles retained some of their red color and the tree drops its leaves. The lovely red maple is native to central and eastern portions of North America, and it's the most widely distributed of all tree species along the east coast when you consider how far north and south it successfully grows. This is Angeline. Thank you for watching and learning about Acer rubrum, also known as red maple. Visit IdentifyThatPlant.com for more images of red maple, for plant identification resources, and for information about how you can confidently master the skill of correct plant identification.